Lou here. Now if you're new to this channel, I'm a big fan of Sailor Moon. It's sort of an underrated thing from my childhood as I was introduced to it by my cousin when I was pretty young. However, there is one magical girl anime that competed with Sailor Moon in the 90s. Today, why don't we compare them? Not to say which one is better, but rather, how do they match up against one another as magical girl anime from the 90s? Today, let's talk about Sailor Moon vs. Cardcaptor Sakura. Roll the intro, and let's get started. For those who don't know, Sailor Moon is a manga written by Naoko Takauchi on December 28, 1991, with an anime series that came out about a year later in May 1992 to an overwhelming popular success. While the anime was not critically well received, its charm and style as a magical girl anime was so loved that it even exploded into the United States. We were introduced to Sailor Moon in September 1995 and basically flip-flopped all over the place due to poor ratings and time slots until 2002. Though Sailor Moon would eventually get a faithful English release in 2015 and a reboot in 2014 to tell the story of the manga at a better pace. Cardcaptor Sakura was was made by the all-women's manga company Clamp on May 2nd, 1996 to pretty big success. An anime series would be made two years later in April 1998. Though I find it funny, it released shortly after Sailor Moon Stars ended. Cardcaptor Sakura would also get two English releases like Sailor Moon. An English dub was made by Nelvana, which pretty much gave it the full four kids treatment, although it had decent voice actors. It was also renamed to just Card Captors and tried to make it appeal to boys by focusing more on Shaolan. Another one would be made by Animax that was extremely faithful but had really bad acting. Like, this dub would consist of literally five people with New Yorker accents voicing 20 characters. It's got a big fan dub vibe to it with this one. And in 2018, Cardcaptor Sakura would continue again in a new arc called Clear Card that released in January 2018 to some pretty massive hype, though mixed critical reception. Now, Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura are not technically at the same time, since the anime for Cardcaptor started in 1998 and Sailor Moon in 1992. I can at least say they're still technically competitors. I mean, they're not competitive in the aggressive way we're all used to. American competition and overseas competition is a little different here. This isn't like Bratz vs. My Scene. While I didn't watch this anime until last year, I have always heard of people talking about which one they watched as a kid. You had some people who grew up with Sailor Moon, and then you have some people who grew up with Cardcaptor Sakura. It didn't help that they aired on different networks, too. Though I will be comparing the anime here, that's the one everyone is going to be introduced to the most thanks to the anime boom of the late 90s and early 2000s. I also haven't found the time to sit down and read Cardcaptor's manga, so that's also a factor. As for visuals, I apologize for the gameplay here, but Sailor Moon copyright has been pretty strong lately thanks to some attempts I've tried to do with some videos. So I apologize in advance that you won't be seeing much of either anime in this video. Alright, let's start with the stories. <laughs> Cardcaptor Sakura is about a girl named Sakura Kinomoto. She's a 10-year-old girl living with her father and brother as her mother passed away when she was 3 years old. On a stormy night, she stumbles upon a book and it opens and cards fly out of the book and a weird little winged teddy bear thing pops out. His name is Kiro and he tells her that she accidentally unleashed the clo cards and so now Sakura has gained powers and has to collect all the clo cards back. Along the way, we do very slowly learn about the Clo cards. This boy named Shaolan who knows about the cards, her best friend Tomoyo is there to film everything, her crush Shikito, and that's pretty much it. I'm not going to spoil much here as the point is more to compare the overall story, but there is obviously a little more to it. I'll be honest, the lore in this anime turns by very slowly. Even then, it's mostly shrouded by Sakura's personal problems. 
You see, because she's 10 years old, a lot of the problems for the series are problems for an average 10 year old. This includes things like your first crush being an older guy, having a fight with a friend, school, and your older brother teasing you. While she does have to deal with the cloak cards, the cards in general are honestly not world ending. The stakes are honestly a lot smaller, which is probably symbolism for life problems that happen when you're 10 years old. They may look big, but in reality, it's it's quite small. At least that's what it was like for the first 30 or so episodes before things finally kicked off near the end and things got a little more interesting with the cloak cards and the people who may or may not know about them. Overall, Card Captor Sakura's story is good, but the incredibly young age of Sakura makes her life issues a little minuscule. Then again, this anime was meant for 10 year olds in Japan. Though speaking of kids, I will add that there's a lot of weird pedo stuff in this anime sometimes. Like Sakura's mom was 16 and married her teacher who isolated her from her family. A 10 year old student is dating her 25 ish year old teacher in the manga and like, the anime itself sets up that Sakura is going to get with Yukito for a very long time, which um, no. Though I am forgiving of all of this, because when we're like 10 or 12, we think an older guy is really cool, and maybe that's what they were trying to appeal. But like, let's not normalize that. Like, let's leave a crush as a crush, and let's not fantasize the idea of minors being with adults, because when we're young, we think that's a cool idea. Because that's not a cool idea, that's a very gross idea. Now on to Sailor Moon. Millions of years ago, there was a kingdom on the moon called the Moon Kingdom. This era of the world was called the Silver Millennium and a war between the moon and the earth caused by Queen Barrow killed nearly everyone and caused all the guardians of the inner planets to die, including the princess of the Moon Kingdom and the prince of the Earth Kingdom. As the world is going to reset itself to ensure life remains, Queen Serenity uses the last of her life energy to create a spell that will reincarnate her daughter and her friends to ensure that they live a happy and peaceful life the way she wanted her to. In the 90s, or 2010s if you're looking at the reboot, we meet Usagi Tsukino, a 14 year old girl who finds a mysterious black cat with a band-aid on her head. Usagi may be clumsy and a slacker, but she's also a very sweet person and helps remove the band-aid from the cat's head, where she runs back to school. All the while, Queen Beryl is still around and using her minions to slowly wreak havoc. There's a possibility that the silver crystal from the Moon Kingdom is still out there and she wants it. When Usagi returns home, the cat thanks her. Her name is Luna and she sees potential in Usagi so she makes her a sailor guardian. Protected by the moon and the one named Sailor Moon, after defeating her first bad guy, we're introduced to the mysterious and handsome Tuxedo Mask who is also after the crystal. In the meantime, the modern lives of the Sailor Guardians begin to awaken and they slowly begin to defeat Queen Beryl's minions and face off against the overpowered queen herself. Now obviously the story has a lot more to it than Cardcaptor Sakura. There's a lot more involving reincarnations, evil queens, forbidden love, and shoujo hijinks. Not to say Cardcaptor Sakura doesn't have that with the cloak card lore, and Sakura herself being a half-descendant of Klo in a really confusing way in the manga, but it's not as big as Sailor Moon. Though so keep in mind that I'm referring to just Cardcaptor Sakura. I know that Clamp has a very extensive and insane multiverse, but I'm looking at the two properties on their own without any previous or later incarnations. This includes Subasa Chronicles, Triple X Holic for Sakura, and Codename Sailor V for Sailor Sailor Moon. Anyway, there's a bigger cast of characters, and the cast only gets bigger with every season of Sailor Moon. Even the characters galaxies away showing that this solar system isn't the only one with Sailor Guardians. Because we have a larger cast, we have way bigger character interactions. And although it's a monster of the week formula like Sakura, the difference is that the characters are expressive and large enough to where things feel different. There's also the lack of hiding their identities, which is a trope that gets pretty old to me, especially as someone who grew up watching Hannah Montana, you know? The main five girls each have their own personal problems and stakes and personal issues that are a lot higher. 
Later on, Usagi deals with insecurity that she isn't good enough for Mamoru as many girls do in their relationship. The Outer Scouts learn to work together with the Inner Scouts. Chibi Utsa struggles to be an immortal child. Makoto struggles to balance femininity and masculine traits, and so on and so forth. Usagi also shows a lot more character growth than Sakura, if I'm being honest. I know Sakura grows a lot older and wiser, so to speak, but there isn't much of a difference between when she's 10 years old versus when she's 13, aside from being a little more mature and serious. Usagi goes from a lazy brat to an optimistic fighter who won't give up on her friends even when she's beaten to the ground. Yet at the same time, is emotionally hurt by all these battles and witnessing her friends and boyfriend die every fucking Tuesday. Though maybe that's due to the age demographic here. Sailor Moon was meant for older teens in Japan compared to the much younger ones of Cardcaptor Sakura. Though this doesn't mean Sailor Moon is flawless, it also suffers from a slow as fuck pace sing in the 90s anime and has its own weird pedo shit going on. Don't get me wrong, Mamoru and Usagi are quite literally a timeless couple and I adore them, but it's also weird that she's 14 and he's 18. The anime makes it even worse where she's 14 and he's in his 20s, like that's red flags people. Not to mention Chibiusa's weirdly implied romance with that Pegasus, or at least some very creepy shit is going on in the 90s anime. I get major Renesmee Colon and Jacob Black vibes from Twilight with that relationship. Jeez. Once again, I know teenagers think it's cool to date an older guy, but we really shouldn't be promoting this kind of stuff. Like, it's that kind of romanticizing that causes problems for teenage girls later on. Anyway, while both stories are really interesting and have their own strengths and weaknesses, I will personally give it to Sailor Moon. I will admit that I'm probably biased, but I always found the lore of Sailor Moon's past life interesting, and the exploration of other galaxies and other scouts was always my favorite. Though it doesn't mean Cardcaptor Sakura is bad or anything, it's just down to preference for me. Now here's where it gets tricky. Sakura doesn't really have transformations. Instead, her best friend Tomoyo makes her magical girl clothes to show off in her videos. Even then, Sakura isn't wearing any kind of magical girl-esque dress. Sometimes she's in her school uniform fighting these wacky cards. Meanwhile, Sailor Moon pretty much has the same form until the finale of each arc where she gets a power-up. Though her powers themselves do change during big plot points, same with other characters. Personally, the best Sailor Moon outfit will always be her Super S one. The iridescent bow is just gorgeous and I love the gradient on her skirt. Not to mention her pendant and gosh, I could gush forever over how much I love her Super S form. Her star's outfit is pretty in some parts. But I'm overall not a fan of the weird gumball sleeves. Even though the other scouts all have the same uniform, there's at least some variety. We have scouts who wear boots, heels, low-cut boots, and all share vastly different color palettes. Though if you ask me, Saturn is by far the best Sailor Scout design, and I'm totally not saying that because Sailor Saturn is my favorite Sailor Scout next to Chibiusa. I will give Sailor Moon for Magical Girl transformations, but Cardcaptor Sakura wins for more costume variety. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Sailor uniforms, and they're iconic as hell, but Sakura had a lot of really cute and well-designed outfits too. Even if we don't get a transformation, they're still adorable, so Sakura wins for this part. Sailor Moon has themes of love and friendship, though mostly love. Love for your friends, significant other, children, pets, and even those you've only heard about. It's using your love and showing it to others, as Usagi uses her deep love for her friends to win her hardest battles. Sakura also has themes of love here, but it's more about relationships. Not really romantic ones because she's so young, but the bonds we form with the people around us while we're young that help us become wiser and more mature. From your brother teasing you for being a hothead, admiration for your parents' job, and more that help you grow. It's showing that family and friendship can be just as, if not more, important than your romantic life. 
Thanks to love being a central theme here, both series also feature LGBT relationships. Cardcaptor Sakura has Sakura's brother Toya falling in love with her brother Yukito. Though to be honest, their relationship is not nearly as open as it probably should be. I mean, you definitely can't get away with two bros just getting married idea here like a sports anime would, but it feels vague. I get it though, publishing issues probably made it difficult to be a little more obvious with their relationship. Sailor Moon, meanwhile, has quite a few LGBT representation. Haruka and Michiru are in a relationship, and unlike Toya and Yukito, their love is shown a lot more openly on screen. Though we never get a kiss, we do get flirtation, handholding, and literal open confirmation. Though this was censored in the English dub, using them as cousins for some fucking reason. Though there isn't just a gay couple, Haruka herself is some spectrum of gender fluid according to the manga and crystal anime, and Zoisite and Kunzite are also in a relationship. I mean, for a series about love, it makes sense. All spectrums of love should be shown, so it's a no-brainer to show LGBT couples and people. I mean, I can't tell you how many friends I've had or people I follow online who all say that Sailor Moon was a major factor in helping them understand who they are. Overall, both themes are the same, and I appreciate exploring all kinds of love. Though I am giving it a little negative for Cardcaptor Sakura because of that weird pedo shit that rubs me the wrong way. Still a tie of course, but jeez, that pedo shit was just, yeah, no. Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura are both classics of the 90s and early 2000s. While they were both meant for pretty young audiences in Japan, they've both been enjoyed by everyone of all ages and genders. While I do think Cardcaptor Sakura is a little lacking due to its overwhelming amount of filler and limited cast for a show of its kind, they're both equally good. While I do love Sailor Moon due to my nostalgia and deep love for literally anything with pink and glitter thrown on top of it, I can admit it's got some flaws with the same filler issues and limited character costumes. It's kind of funny actually, what one lacks the other makes up for. If you want to watch either of these, I highly recommend both of them. Sailor Moon can be watched via Hulu and Crunchyroll, while Cardcaptor Sakura was recently put on Netflix. Though another thing, Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura win by having gosh awful original English dubs. Sailor Moon with the Deke and Cloverway dubs, Deke and Cloverway skipped several episodes, cut several scenes, gave everyone American names, and censored Haruka and Michido's relationship. Other things too, by giving everyone totally tubular 90s lingo that heavily dated the series. Sailor Moon is at least lucky that it has a brand new English dub done by Viz Media that's extremely faithful to the original dialogue and really well voice acted. To me anyway, I know some people criticize Viz Media for being too accurate, but it's better than recent Funimation dubs that destroy the original context. Meanwhile, Cardcaptor Sakura's Nelvana dub is also pretty gosh damn awful for pretty much doing the exact same thing as the Deacon Cloverway dubs. Though it does give props for having Sakura and Shaolan voiced by actual children, even if they were really stiff. Still, Cardcaptor Sakura has another dub by Animax, and while that one is pretty faithful, it gets major negatives for the gosh awful voice acting and literally having a solid five people voice the entire cast. A shame Sakura hasn't been redubbed to the way Sailor Moon has, actually. Though, watch as I say this, Funimation announces they're redubbing Cardcaptor Sakura. That'll be it for this video, though, guys. Let me know down below what you think. Which one is your favorite? Or do you like them both? Do you want to see another anime versus video like this? Let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any older new subs would like to help support the channel in any possible way, my Kofi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who would like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!